York's classic rock, Q1043. James S. Murray is here with us this morning at Q104.3, known throughout the entire planet Earth by his legions of fans and friends as Murr. Good morning. Good morning, Hi, guys. How are you? I'm doing okay. You know, when last we spoke, uh, you had uh, just been celebrating the release of Impractical Jokers, the movie, which, uh, and that release was simultaneous with the world shutting down. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, great timing. That was the other though. What, yeah, they're unrelated. Those two things. <laughs> but but that was the timing, and yeah. and and movie theaters throughout the globe were closing down just just as uh, as your film was being released. You you did manage though eleven million dollars at the box office, which considering uh, all of the obstacles that were in place, uh, considering that. That's quite an extraordinary performance. You know, we had uh, we had two weeks in the theaters before it shut down. So at least I got to see it on the big screen, which is really all we wanted anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and the crazy thing is they, the network had us touring the country, going to different theaters. So like the four of us spread out to different cities every single day, popping in and surprising fans in theaters. So it was like the last possible moment to get a movie in theaters before everything shut down. Think okay. of this, Murr. You made more money on your movie than Liam Neeson made in his last movie that was out last weekend. Think of this. It was like more than three times as much. <laughs> I, that's a, I'm no Liam Neeson, uh, <laughs> but uh, sure, I'll take that as a compliment, I guess. <laughs> okay, you, you said, Murr, that you, when you did that uh, in the movie theaters uh, for those two weeks, that you were surprising your fans. So when people bought a ticket to go see the film, they didn't know you were gonna be there? Not necessarily, uh, although I would put it on social media, I'm gonna pop out here, but I was doing like, I was hitting 16 to 18 movie theaters a day for every day while wow. it was open and all the guys were. Like we literally routed it in such a way that we were just running and running and running and hitting multiple screens. They'd stop the movie in the middle of the movie and bring the lights up and the audience would be like, what the heck's going on? And I'd walk out and I would take a picture with every single person in the theater. I took six, over 6,000 photos in two weekends uh, with movie and release. Okay, well, you know, when you go to see a Liam Neeson movie, you don't get to do that. <laughs> No. You, you know, you don't get to have your picture taken with Liam no. Neeson to take home with you. So that's a that's a cool thing. That's really why I wanted to talk to you guys today. Uh, uh, we're, I, I'm here to say that I, that Liam Neeson's next movie, I promise you, he will take a photo with every fan that goes to see it. <laughs> Calling you out, Liam. <laughs> now, uh, ordinarily, over these past few months, when we've had conversations with people. You know, we've asked how they've, you know, filled the time since the world kind of locked down. But that seems like kind of a silly question to you because <laughs> nothing has stopped you. You've been doing so much. It's you incredible. Know, Where do you find the time in the day with all your gazillions of TV shows and, 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 and the different things that you do on social media and the new book, which we'll talk about in just a second? Where does the time come from? You know, we, we've had a, it's such an interesting year, obviously. Uh, thank God the guys in our safe. We all, of course, know people that have been uh, affected uh, dramatically in one way or, another, or the other, uh, both financially and physically. But uh, it was interesting. A couple of things came out of this time that would never have happened. One is um, I, I got married. Uh, oh, uh, congratulations. Uh, to, the, to my love. Uh, in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, I understand. Yes, at, a, at a beautiful place there. What's the name of that place? Uh, it's Lake House Inn. We had a perfect day. It was obviously a, a much different wedding than we originally planned. Uh -huh. we, it was such a weird thing because we had to plan four different weddings. The original wedding, a wedding half the size, a wedding a quarter of the size, and then the extreme scenario of just in my backyard with just my family and her family, and that's it, you know? Uh -huh. And thankfully, we were able to do, uh, we were able to move a lot of the venue uh, outdoors uh, and space it apart, and we did the quarter of the list, and uh, and thank God we had a great, beautiful day, and it was perfect. Uh, so that was the big thing that we, we planned during this time. The guys and I had also, um, we missed each other, honestly. We Hadn't, we haven't gone this long without seeing each other in 30 years. We met when we were 13 years old, you know? Uh -huh. years old. So we, uh, we came up with an idea for Impractical Drovers Dinner Party, which is a show that's still on TV now um, that was born out of the pandemic, but is just a really funny show in its own right. 
It's uh, the guys and I having dinner together like this on Zoom, and we broadcast it on TV, and we have different guests join us every week. And, uh, and it's just hysterically funny, like hanging out with your friends for dinner, you know? Uh, and then the third thing that happened was uh, we took the time and the, this feeling that, that we all have had in the past seven, eight months of being cut off from the world and isolation and, uh, and this kind of in, uh, ex constant dread you feel uh, around us. We took that as inspiration for our new thriller and wrote a book uh, in the time, uh, which is the new one that we have that just came out yesterday or the day before called Don't Move, which is very much a product of the times we're in right now. It's a, it's a horror show. thriller. Yeah. <laughs> Would that be correct? A horror thriller? It is. It, but, you know, the first chapter, you read it, it'll guess you and you can't put it down. It, it really is a story about uh, the, this woman. She's very sharp. She, she runs um, uh, the, all the logistical operations at Hunts Point Distribution Center in the Bronx, which is, of course, a third of the East Coast food and poultry and fish goes through that facility. She's a master puzzle solver, right? Uh, anyways, something happens in the first chapter of Don't Move that careens her life in a wholly, uh, completely different direction and uh, almost strips her of her confidence. And she spends the rest of the book trying to get that back while put in another equally dangerous situation uh, out of, that's out of her control. It, 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 the basic hook of it is that there's a church group from the Bronx that goes on their annual summer camping trip to these woods in West Virginia, but the, this particular summer they wander into the wrong woods because these woods, these Wait, woods. when you say that, I mean, it, they wander into the wrong woods. <laughs> I mean, you paint a picture with that one sentence. Thanks, but you have a better voice. But I, I should hire you, Jim, honestly, to do that. Yes, to do the, the audio. Right. Well, the, well, the, the <laughs> when, when it's eventually, when don't move, don't move is made into a film. Yes. You're going to have to get the rights to uh, John Denver's Take Me Home Country Roads. Think of the irony of that. Yeah, you know, you know, he's singing about being in the woods in West Virginia. And yep. then we bring it full circle and you hire Liam Neeson. That's it. That's it. You take the photo with every person that goes to see the Well, Well, your trilogy, uh, the Awakened trilogy, was very, very successful. And, yeah. and I, I, I would imagine that... Uh, on the heels of that success, it builds up your confidence as an author, but still writing fiction is quite a challenge. Some of our greatest literary artists go years between completion of their work because yeah. it's really difficult. You have to keep track of the characters and their personalities and their motivations and what they did yesterday and who their friends are and what they're going to do tomorrow and and little details, you know, like what they like to have for lunch. I mean, it, it's just insane. It's such a different project, not, not to in any way uh, diminish the work of authors of nonfiction. But with fiction, you have to create an entire world and make it uh, believable enough for the uh, readership to buy in. I mean, that sounds like an enormous challenge. The, the fun of it, I think, is creating a character or characters that are interesting and compelling uh, and nuanced and... and have great strengths and, and uh, incredible weaknesses that they need to overcome or not. You know, that, that's a lot of the fun of it for me. But the other big thing for me is I love creating movie moments. You know, there's, there's, you can, when you're reading Don't Move, you are drawn in by the visuals. This is just, we, we anchor the book and every book we write with these great movie moments that you can see on the screen, you can see Liam Neeson swinging down from the <laughs> and the close. You can see it. You feel, yeah, what I'm saying is you can feel Liam Neeson's DNA in every single book we've <laughs> You know, I, I once was speaking with the creators of the Blair Witch Project, which to me, I saw it before the hype, so I was terrified. Yeah, me too. So they told me that writing horror is the same as writing comedy because you have to get the jump. You have to get to the punchline. And it's a very similar process. You know, the end result has to be the same. You laugh, you know, in a comedy or you jump with the horror movie. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I think of what, what it comes down to is affecting people. 
you know, and you have to write in a way that affects them in a strong, visual, visceral way. And that's, that's what we tr strive for. I fell for Blair Witch. I fell for it big time. I remember getting an email sent to me. I was working as like a temp at NBC at the time in like the late 90s. And I was just out of college and I got an email from a friend saying, you have to check this out. I bought it. I thought it was real, yeah. which, is, which is really what it comes out to. It was, it was brilliant marketing as much as anything, you know, which is what I, I strive to reach that, that level of marketing with everything we do. Like, how can we affect people in a different way and grab them in the book in a different way and uh, subvert their expectations and keep them guessing to the end? And that, that's the goal, I think, of anything you do, whether it be comedy or horror. Murr's book is Don't Move. I think Shelley brought up a really interesting point about the uh, place where comedy and horror come together because really one of the keys to comedy is taking people down a certain road and all of a sudden making a left or a right turn and taking them somewhere that they didn't expect to be. And I guess that's where the punchline falls. And, and yes, that is true in horror as well. Because that, that moment when that moment when you feel it in your chest and you jump yeah. you know, out of your seat is when the unexpected suddenly happens. We, Yet we, somehow we, looking back on it, it makes sense. We have a perfect example is years ago, the guys and I from Jokers, before we had a TV show, we used to shoot like sketch comedy videos, right, for the internet. And we shot a, a spoof of the movie Clue, you know? And uh, at the end, Sal is confessing to the crime and uh, that he did it. And he said that he, he, he took the guy to the edge of a bank of bubbling quicksand and shot him. You know what I mean? It's like, so he took him to the edge of a bank of bubbling quicksand and shot him. <laughs> like, so what did he take him to the quicksand? It had nothing to do with the quicksand. The death, you know? Like this uh, reversal. Uh, James S. Murray, Murr, is with us. You're a New Jerseyan now, huh? I live in Princeton. I, here I am, which is partly where the book came from, is that, you know, I'm a, I'm a city boy, right? I grew up in Staten Island, then Brooklyn, then Manhattan for the past 15, 20 years. And uh, we moved here about a year ago before all this happened, thank God, because we have a backyard and uh, a puppy now, and, and, uh, but it's dark at night. So the first night we move in, I wake up, I go to, uh, into the kitchen, the door is wide open to the house. I must not have, you know, Manhattan, you close the door, it locks, you know, I just might, must not have done it. The wind blew it open and I was, I spent months in this house terrified before I finally got my bearings, you know? <laughs> and, and what about the sounds at night? It is creepy. It's creepy. And of course, when you get a, a brand new puppy, you know, the schedule's all over the place and we're she's waking me up at 2 a.m., 4 a.m., like a baby, you know? And now mm -hmm. she's settled down, but you go outside and the, the, the fog is rolling in, the lights, forget it, you know? Have you seen stars? For the first time, I think, in my life. Yes. Isn't it, isn't it bizarre? Isn't it weird? They've got all bizarre. those things up there in so, the sky. This is <laughs> normalcy. Sounds crazy. It sounds crazy because I'm a huge astronomy buff, but I, I've never looked through a really powerful tel telescope. And on our wedding registry, we had one added, and somebody got it for us as a gift. And we saw, for the first time in my life, with my naked eye, I saw the rings of Saturn, which I've only seen pictures of. You, you saw the rings of Saturn with your I naked eye? Yeah, with the telescope. Yeah, but I know? mean, that is cool. It, well, I thought it was fake. I, I've never <laughs> seen anything like it in my life. <laughs> you know, the hairs of my arms stood up when I saw it. Wow, the book is called Don't Move. Now, you mentioned that uh, it starts in the Bronx and, and uh, your protagonist goes on a church trip to West Virginia, uh, you know, where they go into the wrong woods. Now, there are a lot of woods in this country and around the world people could go to. Was there a specific reason you picked West Virginia? Uh, purely because it's the other. You know, obviously, if you have a church group from the Bronx, uh, at what are they used to? What are they? Uh, what familiar sites do they have? Smells and, and 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 how do we take them out of their elements so that they're thrown off immediately, right? Uh, and uh, so we just chose that as something you get to in a day trip if you don't want if you started early enough and to for the weekend hike. Uh, but but you still feel completely isolated and alone, and it's different from anything you've ever experienced as somebody lives from New York or from Brooklyn, mm -hmm. uh, the Bronx. So, uh, and in the book, the, the, cool, the reason this particular forest is haunted, if you will, or isolated, is because in the forest is this kind of prehistoric arachnid that has grown over the centuries and lives in the treetops and can sense any vibration in the forest through its invisible webs that spread out from tree to tree. Uh, so it can use your vibration to hunt you down and kill you. And, uh, and the only way out of the 
the, as it's closing in on you, the only way out of the forest is a class five rapids river, is then they have no boat, of course. Oh, you've thrown in the rapids too. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> now, okay. just imagine at home, just imagine Lee Neeson going down a class five <laughs> rapids river with no boat. That's the visual for the move. There you go. Uh, J- James S. Murray Murr is with us of Impractical Jokers and author. And uh, <laughs> your friends, our friends, will be able to buy your book and meet you in Northvale on Thursday? Yes, uh, Thursday, uh, October 29th. I'll be in Northvale, New Jersey at Books and Greetings. Uh, and I'm actually meeting people in person. We'll be distanced, of course, no masks on, but we'll still get, I'll still get to meet you, take an autograph, uh, autograph your copy of Don't Move, and take a photo with you in person. Okay, and uh, all the details regarding uh, those appearances and more people can find at jamesmurrayofficial.com. I'll give you a shortcut for that. Just go to murlive.com. Murlive.com, it'll take you right there. Okay. <laughs> I want to go buy the book. No, I'll, Jim, I'll send you a copy. I know. Oh, I, I, like to buy, I like to buy books. I, I appreciate that, but let me send you one. Come on. I'd like to buy 32 Avenue of the Americas, New York. <laughs> I don't I don't even remember. You know, it's been so long since I've been at work. I don't remember the zip code there anymore. Yeah. Um, 10013. Okay, but anyway, I do love to go and buy books. Yeah. Uh, uh, even if, well, and especially when friends of mine write them, I like to buy them. Uh, and it breaks my heart. My Barnes and Noble on 86th Street here on the Upper East Side of Manhattan that I've been shopping at for years is gone now. Oh, gosh, yeah. This gone forever. I mean, during they closed down forever. Uh, and I moved into this neighborhood in 1976, and I've always been a quick walk to the Barnes and Noble. And uh, you know, I miss my bookstore. Yeah, so well, much. The the, um, the these things that we do. If you notice, we're appearing at books and greetings, book review. These are local independent booksellers, which are really struggling right now. I mean, yeah. these are our neighborhood bookstores and your friends in your neighborhood that work there and they're at risk of having to close their doors forever. So we're trying, and the entire book launch I just did, all of that went to local bookstores around the country. Okay, you know? so, so, let's, so let's plug those two bookstores again right now. Sure. And, and also what time you're going to be there. Yes, yeah, so Thursday, October 29th, I will be at Books and Greetings in Northvale, New Jersey at 7 p.m. Uh, you can go to meet, uh, you can go to murlive.com to get tickets for that right now. And then on Saturday, November 7th, I will be in Huntington, Long Island at Book Review at I think uh, 2 p.m. or so, uh, meeting with fans, signing your books, and taking pictures with you as well. Go to murlive.com to join for either of those events. Okay, and uh, of course, the book, once again, is called don't move uh you can pick it up now anywhere books are sold or going to by going to meetmer.com don't move is a good title isn't it yep yep that's good and it's appropriate that's what we're all told yeah yes (laughs) a lot of good times we're in you know yeah not be able to move when you start reading the book well thank you so much congratulations on the publication of the new book and all the other stuff that you've been doing and congratulations on being a married guy and congratulations on living in the suburbs and congratulations on seeing the rings around saturn and uh <laughs> and anything else that you may oh and becoming really really close personal best friends with liam neeson yes, yes. thank you so much to liam especially for all your support in these trying times for all, <laughs> all right thank you so much mer thanks mer right, thanks for having me yeah. New York's classic rock, Q1043.